In this NAS A32 quick tip, we're going to talk about your options to power the board. Here's mine installed on the top of my mini quad. We have the uh, connections to the speed controllers at the top and the connection to the remote control receiver at the side. There are a couple of options for us to power the board and a couple of different types of speed controllers and what's called battery eliminator circuits. So we're going to talk about those first because depending on what type of BEC you have in the speed controller that you have installed on the craft depends on how you install these bits and pieces at the top. The five volts that powers the receiver, which is down here just out of the screen, actually comes from these pins up here. So if you want to try and test the board and the receiver connections and all the channels, you have to connect the plus five volts in at the top. So let's think about the different speed controllers that we have to choose from. So here's a classic uh, little speed controller from our friends at Hobby King. This one's a very cheap and cheerful 20 amp one. I use these guys a lot. It has what's called a linear BEC, battery eliminator circuit. And what that does is that puts out on the red wire of the servo cable plus five volts. So although the speed controller plugs into a 11.1 or higher battery, it actually puts out five volts on the cable to power the NASA 32. Now the great thing about linear battery eliminator circuits is that you can plug these kind of cables in side by side. So here we have the speed controllers plugged in. These are all linear BECs and they're quite happy to all be plugged in together. So hopefully here you can see that all the red wires are connected side by side. Linear BECs are very tolerant of this and will actually work beautifully in this configuration. It also means actually it gives you a little bit more current because the common voltage rail, the plus five volts in the ground, is connected to all the plus five volt supplies from all of the ESCs. The next kind of battery eliminated circuit you sometimes come across are what's called switched BECs. Now these are a little bit more sophisticated. There's actually a set of electronics in this little tin can and what they do is exactly the same if it, this was part of a speed controller it puts out the five or six volts but rather than do it like a linear BEC where essentially it gets rid of the excess voltage as heat which is why you have this big heat sink on it uh, smarter and more expensive speed controllers have a switching BEC as part of it now, if it's a switched BEC, then you have to be a little bit more careful. So if we had four speed controllers on the model that had switched BECs, then this time we would only install one of the wires with the red wire connected, one of the servo connections with the red wire connected. On all of the others except one, we would actually pull out that red wire so that the plus five volts was only being supplied from one of the BECs that was part of the ESC. And that makes sure that what happens is because of the way that a switching UBEC works, it's always listening and testing the voltage on the output. And what can happen if you have multiple ones installed side by side is they fight with each other and that fighting can cause voltage fluctuations and get you in trouble. So, so far, if it's a linear BEC, then you can plug them all in together. If it's a switched BEC, you just plug in one of the red wires and just pull all of the others out of the servo connections. So the last kind of speed controllers that you'll come across are Opto or Optio speed controllers. These have uh, a, an optically isolated set of electronics, but typically don't have a battery eliminator circuit in it. So they don't supply the plus five volts that we need to run these electronics. But an awful lot of the Opto or Optio speed controllers want to see five volts coming out of the speed controller in order to initialize properly. So what do you do in that instance? Well, with an Opto speed controller, you plug them all in, you make sure that all the red wires are connected, but of course there's no five volts at that point coming in and powering the board. And then what you need to do on one of the spare channels is get a separate battery eliminator circuit. I'd suggest a switch one because they're just more efficient and pop that onto one of the spare servo connectors or um, outputs 
And what this will do is this will now supply the five volts that will actually run the board and the receiver. And it will also provide the five volts that some of the opto ESCs need to see so that they will initialize. So those are your three options really. First is linear, where you basically plug everything in side by side and they'll be happy. Second is switched, where you install everything apart and from one of the red wires, you pull the red wires from the other connections for the speed controllers. Last one is Opto or Optio ESCs that don't have a speed controller as part of them, where you will need a separate battery eliminator circuit plugged into one of the spare ports by the side of the motor connections. That will supply the five volts for the board, but also will supply the five volts that some of those speed controllers need in order to initialize. So hopefully that helps for those of you that are thinking about this. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and happy flying.